it's fitting that Casio's first successful product was a Ubiwa pipe, which allowed you to wear a cigarette on your finger via a ring and smoke it down to the nub while you worked. It was about giving you the best bang for your buck, both for your time and your cigarette. That's really, in my opinion, Casio's ethos, and we find that in the CZ1000. Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Zach Marr from Alamo Music here in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications. This is our Alamo Sound Lab channel where we talk about all things music tech related. And today we're talking about the Casio CZ1000 through the lens of since that time forgot. And the CZ series is not totally forgotten. A lot of people, these were their first since. They were super budget and affordable. I think it was the first digital synth under $500 that you could pick up. But it didn't have the long running legacy or history that you have from a lot of the other synths from this time, such as the DX7, um, the Roland D50, the Korg M1, other digital synths which, had a, which have had a much longer legacy in synthesis. And the type of synthesis it uses Phase distortion, again, has not become a type of synthesis that's been continued to be used in instruments like FM synthesis. So it really exists in kind of this pocket of the early 80s, late 70s. Actually, it's not the late 70s, the early 80s, where Casio developed this technology and released these products. So let's talk about the history a little bit. So Casio, really strange history. Like I said at the beginning, they came out with... Their first successful product was a cigarette holder that allowed you to smoke it all the way down to the nub and get the biggest bang for your buck from the cigarette, which at the time in Japan, post-World War II, it wasn't a super prosperous country, and so that was important. And I always associate Casio with giving a lot for very little. And so I think that's sort of the ethos of Casio, and you find that in the CZ1000. So the way you get there from a cigarette holder is they went into making calculators and um, as well as uh, watches, digital watches. And in 1979, out of nowhere, they released the VL Tone, which was this strange little digital synth that was also a calculator and a sequencer. It was a monosynth. It was using another type of kind of alternate synthesis using the the Welsh function, and it was a commercial success. It was very inexpensive. It was like 70 bucks at the time, and it was digital, which is kind of when you think about the history of digital synthesis, the fact that they came out with a little $70 synthesizer that was digital back then. It was pretty groundbreaking, pretty ahead of its time. And from there, they did the Casio tones, which were kind of these little home portable type synthesizers that used various, again, alternate forms of synthesis. One used um, the vowel consonant synthesis, which I'm not even sure what exactly that is. But as I was reading about it, I was like, that sounds interesting. So they were all these kind of alternate instruments. And the CZ series came out of a kind of mega synth that they were developing, the Cosmo synth. Um, that they never really released, and they made one of, and it was like $30,000, insanely expensive. But it used phase distortion, which was a technology they developed, and which is mathematically apparently identical to FM synthesis, but implemented in a different way so that they didn't get in trouble with patent law. So the CZ series came out, the, there was the CZ-101 and the CZ-1000, and the 101 is the CZ-1000 in a smaller form, and that was the first in 1984. They released it, and it was under, it was right out of five, I think it was under 500 bucks, and it was, for the time, revolutionary. For a digital synth under 500 bucks, it became many people's first digital synth that couldn't afford the DX7, which was like, I think, two grand, so very, very affordable, um, and sounds really rich. It sounds really good. I was surprised. I If you read online, there's kind of a cult following for 
CZ series synthesizers from Casio. And I was kind of on the fence. I was like, is this really gonna sound as good as people say? But when you listen to it, it's incredibly warm sounding and it, it's fun to play with. It's got a lot of neat features and it's, it's pretty easy to use and it's just fun. So three things about it stand out to me. One, it has an eight stage envelope, which is pretty powerful and pretty complex when you compare many other synths that kind of just do a four stage envelope. It also has um, ring modulation, a form of ring modulation and noise modulation, which are kind of interesting things. Um, the way it's implemented is not really what you would associate traditionally with ring modulation and noise modulation, but it sound, it's a cool effect, it sounds cool. Um, and it also has a vibrato as kind of a effect, which is an LFO effectively. Um, you can choose different shapes to the vibrato, but those two things I think make it stand out. And the third is the ability, the way you kind of construct the sound, each, it has two DCOs and each DCO is made up of two waveforms. And so you can stack, make kind of more complex waveforms um, by stacking two of them and then stacking those on top of each other. It has eight voice polyphony. If you're just using one of the DCOs, if you used both of them, you're down to um, four. And you can also, interestingly enough, run it as a monosynth with MIDI and have four vo voices going at the same time. So it's like one of the first multi um, timbral options, digitally speaking. So interesting synth, the fact that it had a good MIDI implementation or a decent for the time and all these kind of analogy effects and the fact that it sounds so nice really is surprising. So I think that's what's magical about it. Let's take a listen and we'll conclude with some final thoughts.
nice sounding synth. I was surprised when I got a hold of it. I was pleasantly surprised because you can still pick these up fairly cheap, a couple hundred bucks. They're still relatively affordable. The bigger brothers, the CZ1, the CZ3000, they're a little bit more at this point, but these you can still pick up pretty inexpensively and it adds a nice kind of palette to your synth collection for relatively cheap. Really interesting, again, I, Casio's contribution to synth history is a strange one with phase distortion and the kind of mysterious Cosmo synth that they only made one of, which was really kind of a failed Synclavier or Fairlight. But still interesting contribution, fun to look at them, and I understand why now they have a cult following. Would love to hear your thoughts below. What of which of the CZ series do you like the best? Did you grow up with one? Would love to hear people's stories. Any interesting facts that I left out, please add them below. Thank you for watching. And if you want to talk more, you can find us at alamomusic.com. We can chat, email, give us a call. We'd love to see you there. And thank you again for watching. Until next time.